Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today, um, I'm really just going through this antiquarian book. And I thought last night, well, you know, I'm not using up the spray inks like I'm supposed to after I bought all them. And um, I thought, well, I'll come in here and go through this book and just spray every page with what I have left over. And I thought I would really saturate every page. And that's what I proceeded to do. And I really can't give you a name on these because I've mixed so many together. This is bubblegum pink, but I've mixed so much of it together. I mixed others with this carved pumpkin and this fired brick. I have um, abandoned coral and pickled raspberry. And I just went through and just saturated all of them. And, you know, mixed some together, sprayed some here and there. Uh, let me see, I thought I had one in between here. Let me jump forward, show you this page I did the other day with one of the uh, Fury Logic. And this one, and then I seen some letters. I don't remember what it said, but you know me, I'll cut all these letters apart and make something different. And I said, I don't see it that way. And the owl's got his head turned like Scooby Doo. And so some are shimmer paints, some are not. You see, I mixed uh, one of my greens. And then the green was too dark, so I really just shot it real heavy with the yellow, and I like the effect that came out. And um, kind of as I was doing this, you know, I would pull pages from my uh, watercolor book. You know, the watercolor pad book that has the white empty pages and I thought that you know as I'm going along if they're too saturated you know I would mop all of them up you know so that's what I proceeded to do and here's what I got and then I was going through my drawer you know, trying to look for, you know, like, stuff like this. I thought, okay, I'm going to make tags with this. And as I pulled the drawer open, I came across this, which I had made, I don't know, two years ago. It's where I took a big button and then a, a tea-dyed coffee filter and a tea-dyed book page and just alternated them. And, and then, you know, I sewed the button on with twine, brown rope-like twine, and got this. And I thought, you know, that would really look cool in a journal. Like, especially you with your junk journals. And I'll put on several different pages, let you see how that looks. And I got to thinking... Uh, well, why don't I do that with these? So, I think I will. And I remember the other day I had bought some pink pair of shorts. And, you know, these were the two leftover pink buttons. And then it's got a clear button in there. But I thought I'll use these two pink buttons. And uh, I'm going to cut these out in circles. And... Also, let me show you, hang on. And I thought for this application, instead of using tea dyed and coffee dyed, I would co use Kool-Aid. And this might look orange on camera, but it's pink. 
uh, might be pink raspberry and this one here is just plain out cherry even though it looks a little orangey on camera okay hang on so then i took a cookie sheet put the tin foil on it and dipped some coffee filters in it and they're not quite dry yet this one you know you can tell i dipped the whole thing in then i took some and just put you know folded them like this and dipped them in the pink one and then dipped them in the red one so they're going to be like tie-dyed and they're not quite dry yet but i thought they would be very interesting and you know what i think i'll do now that i've opened them up i think i'll lay them on here and turn them turn my oven on for a minute or two i could put them under the air fryer in the oven on air fry and uh draw all these out and i'll be right back okay so i put these in my convection oven and for four minutes and which i periodic periodically checked on them after each minute and you know of course this was the one that took the longest to dry but you know i kept moving this one around on the edges so it would hang over the pan and dry quicker so it was a total of four minutes so now we've got to decide well let me bring these papers back over and what i want to do to these is see if i can't crumple these up and let's just see what we get now this is um you know watercolor paper i think it's 60 pounds and we'll just try it out. Maybe an epic fail, may not be an epic fail. But I'm pretty sure a ton of you out there have jelly rolled paper. I'm pretty sure of it. And you're thinking, well, what am I going to do with all that jelly roll paper? What am I going to do with all that jelly roll paper? Okay, I guess now we got to decide what, what, how big we're going to make each circle. And kind of think of it, um, I guess I'm going to have to use this one for the middle because if I use this one for the middle, then I'm defeating my purpose over here. And plus, on this one, I could probably cut circle four different circles. And let's just try this. I'm going to try to cut four circles at one time. And where do you all think my good scissors are? They're in there on my coffee table. So we're just going to cut four circles. And you know, I wouldn't even try to use a coffee cup or anything like that because you want them to be kind of um you know not perfect and plus i should have crinkled those up better and which i haven't done that at all but it helps and i was thinking it probably would help if i had a big white sheet of paper down here too where you all could see better I think I'll just open this big 
uh, watercolor book up. I'll let that be my background. Okay, so... And I really don't want to cut, cut any of this away either. So... Let's kind of... Uh, See where we're at with this. And probably would have been best had we dyed a whole lot more than this, but I think I'm only going to make the one flower. And I guess I got to go even bigger. And then we'll save that one kind of like it is. I don't even know if I'll use this one, but we can... You know, I don't know if I want to make one big flower, a couple flowers, or what. But we'll go ahead and cut this one big on the big side. We can always make it littler. Okay, so. Then I've got to kind of... See, I really don't have to fold it, but for me, it kind of helps. You know, you all can just cut your little round circle however. And no, see, that made a big four-leaf clover. A big four-leaf clover. kind of oblongy. I think I'll leave it like that. Who knows? That might work out. Um, so, we can put this one behind that one. And as you all can see, it don't quite go to the edge. But then, you know, don't worry about that because in the very end, we can always go back and trim. Whoops, I got my other one in the background. That wasn't smart. And that's why you make extra. Which I have a ton of extra Kool-Aid in there. So I'm not worried about that. Kool-Aid for days in there, still in those bowls. And you know, that might have been a happy... You know, that might have been a happy accident. Who knows? I always think when stuff like this happens, you know, something was saying to me, you know, let's, you know, they was, it was just something in mind. Just, that's what it was. A higher power was saying, let's go with that. And 
So let me go find some thread. Okay, I went there hunting for some thread. And I couldn't find the uh, spool of thread, but I did happen to come across... I guess I had thrown this back in my sewing machine. It was where I made a um, clothesline on my bulletin board to hang watercolor paper. Is what this is. So, um, I'm going to try to undo it right here, which that might not take but a second, I hope. Then again, I think it might take more than a second. Let's just cut it. Okay, and so I've got this big needle here. It's not a, what you call it, needle. I don't know if this is a, um... I don't know what kind it is. It's very thick end on it, guys. I'm sure someone out there knows. Oh, and while I was in there, looking in my drawer, I happened to come across this shank button. You know, the shank buttons had that on the back. And I thought, wouldn't that be great? So, and to give this more interest, you don't have to lay each layer quite in the center. You know, you could you know, pull this one out to this side, pull this one to this side. You know, they don't have to be so centered. And we're going to see how this does. And remember, well, remember, Sandy, that you got to tie a big fat knot back here. So I'm going to just do a square knot over, under, and then under, over is a square knot. And, and, You know, very stiff twine. Very stiff twine. Okay. And stick it through. And no, it won't. <laughs> Let's see if I can stick the twine through. I think, by golly, we can. But then you have to make sure, which I should have brought my wax in here. And I'm going to have to thread it back through my needle. Which I'm hoping I don't have to do this but one time. It's not like the other button. I was going to have to thread it through uh, twice. Okay, and I guess the trick would be... Okay, I'm going to pull this up and we're going to tie it in a knot. And I'm going to pull it up a little bit so I don't have so much trouble. And I guess even if you guys wanted to, you could stick like a toothpick on the back side if you, you know, didn't want to. If you wanted to really pull it really tight and not, you know, be uh, tearing your paper. Okay. And there you have it. 
a nice little flower to go in your junk journal and we'll flip through here and just see what it looks like there's on the pink page you know it would be pretty cool to put on the front of one of your junk journals uh, I think it looks pretty cool on that one the really bright one with the bright shank button. There's against that pink, you know, part pink, part shimmery. There it is against that one. And I was thinking, do I have my Y book in here? Hang on, guys. Let me get it. And here we are back with a Y book. And, you know, I was laying out a page this morning. And... We'll just see what it looks like against some of these pages. Even though the flower is a bit big, and come to think of it, this leaf that I had cut out of the um, botanical book, I don't know, you could stick it in there like that. How neat is that, huh, guys? And here's a little pine cone. You know, you could even stick a little pine cone in there or put it on the page. And here's some other little doodads, which I think that looks great with that. And we'll just flip the pages. There's with green. And, you know, here's, let me take this other book out. It's, here's the, you know, say like you want to decorate your book like that. And, you know, for fall or just something of that nature. Let's see on a different color. Here's this turquoise blue, which looks really good. I like it against that. That's like the turquoise with a little bit of that uh, quinacridone yellow. There's on a red page. Let me move you guys over. That would really look good for fall. What happened back here? <laughs> My knot come undone. I'll probably have to do the knot, and I think I'll squirt it with a little bit of hot glue because that twine is kind of stiff. So that's what I'm going to have to do. There it is on the green. But yeah, th I think that would be a great idea to uh, put it you know, put a little dab of hot glue. Look how it looks even against that page I did yesterday. Wow, guys, that, that just pops. There's the blue. There's my white page. Here was, um working on one this morning I'll go ahead and show you guys uh, you know I had that tribal book that um, the with the ladies artwork and it, wow I love that one too love that middle of the page looks great 
you know, had these tribal images in it. I was kind of working on one of those. It even looks good with this lady, kind of, you know, put her in here. It is going to be kind of fat in your journal, but there it is against the really dark blue. That really pops, too. And I was even thinking I have a few others cut out. You know, how would that look? Um, let's see, how would the berries look? That would look good, too, with the berries. Kind of looks better on top of it. Let's see if I got anything else. But I think it looks really good with that also. And this is against just the red. Here's the gold and quinacridone. I like these on top of it instead of, you know, back behind it. I don't know how that would work. I feel like if I just put it on the page, uh, you know, if you had a stapler, which I did find a stapler um, put out by, not Tim Holtz, but uh, Memory Keepers, that's what it is. Memory Keepers that you can staple anywhere on the page. You'll have to look it up, but uh, it's a stapler that you can move around on a page. The bottom of it was one piece. You stuck it under here. You stuck the paper, and then you stuck this uh, top part, and then it was this floating stapler part on top. So if I want to staple, you know, 12 inches in, you know, I could staple 12 inches in. But I think that might be the... Or... You know, some of you sew your signatures in. You could also sew this in while you're sewing a signature in, which I think that would be a great idea. I've never done that, but, you know, I think that'd be a great idea for those of you who do. And there's the pink. And here's the green and gold. I think that button really pops with that gold there, too. And uh, here's the other one. And I even thought that, you know, some of you didn't want to use a button or did not have a button. Here's another one, too, that I had made. It was kind of like a something to hang on a tree, but, you know, where you just uh, take a bunch of strips and just keep laying them. And then you stick your circle on top. And, you know, you can stick a butterfly on top. But I think I had a couple of these Christmas ornaments on here. I don't see the other one. It's laying here somewhere on my desk. But I had these two little stickers that I had stuck on there. But you could also, you know, put this in your journal as well. But if you all didn't have a shank button or you know whatever you can use a butterfly and you know just put your staple right right center of the body which uh i think this is one that i had started and here is uh a blue butterfly which you could also use I just think that's a fun way for everyone to use up those papers and, you know, we all like these poofy things in our, um, in our junk journals. Oh, here's the page over here with the, you know, I had one other black page and I had taken this out of that uh, book, you know, that I said I was cutting the X-Acto knife on. You know, the front of the book's all tore up, but uh, this lady does tribal pictures. But I just think her pictures really pop against the black. But anyway, 
I uh, just want to show you that little technique today, and I thought it was fun to do with you all. And if you could, uh, subscribe to my channel, hit the thumbs up, and as always, take care and see you tomorrow.